Hello everybody, this is Borna Kazerani from Melbourne, Australia. I hope you're doing fine and having a great time wherever you are in such a crazy circumstances. Anyways, today I'm gonna have a conversation with Harold David who has been painting since the age of 12. Growing up with a single mother who worked night shift in factory. He used this time sneaking into her makeup bag and using her nail polishes as a paint. Now, as an adult in his 50s, he's, mas he's mastered up enough courage to share his love of painting with public. His first solo painting show was in October 2019, a day gallery titled Beauty and Apocalypse. The show sold out. His paintings were also exhibited at the Museum of Fleas as a part of the Sydney Fringe Festival in 2019. Presently, Harold's work can be seen at Daily Gallery Black Hill. After the, 30, uh, after the 30th of May 2020, his work will be able to be seen at online gallery Arts Perp. Harold David is also one of the Australia's premier portrait photographer and has a, a prolific history as a fashion photographer, but he's no longer uh, working as a fashion photographer. His work has featured in GQ, in Style, Yen, Vogue, Australia, The Weekend Australia, and etc. If you're interested to more uh, to get to know more about him and find out actually who I'm gonna have a conversation with, you can go to his Instagram page uh, here. And um, thank you very much for watching us and I really appreciate it for your all great feedback. And now let me ask Harold to join me for a conversation. Hello, Harold. Hi, Borna. How are you doing? How are you? Good. Cold. Yeah. It's very cold. Yeah, I know. Here in Melbourne, it's quite cold as well. So thank you very much for being here today. I really appreciate that. And before I'm going to start my question for you, do you want to say hi to those who are watching us here? Hello from Blackheath, my studio. It's freezing. You're probably warmer than me. <laughs> <laughs> I've just got my scarf next to me just in case. <laughs> Got a nice party on. <laughs> Harold, um, I've got lots of questions for you, and hopefully we um, get enough time to go through every single of them. Plus, people keep uh, people have already started uh, sending me questions. Anyways, tell me about when was the first time you became familiar uh, with painting, which opened a new world to you. Um, I. I started painting, like you said, when I was 12 years old. And my mom worked on the factory line uh, at a um, General Motors factory in Cincinnati. This is after we moved from Detroit. And my mom was such a glamour person. We didn't have a whole lot of money. and But I would flick through magazines I would have bought. And I would grab her makeup bag. And I would look at, like, Joan Crawford or my album cover of Donna Summer. And I just would start, like, with the eyeliner and make the face. And then I would add the, you know, the cheeks and the color and everything. And she she loved it. I mean, she would come home. Oh, my, she still has them. So <laughs> she she asked me all the time, why don't you do that again? That was a lot better. <laughs> so. Okay, fair enough. And that was the time that you started like getting yourself uh, acquainted with uh, paintings and etc. 
Yeah, yeah. Besides, at school, art class was my favorite class. So I loved learning about famous painters. So it was my favorite thing. Right, right. So、uh, you've been working as a professional painter for many years, and but I wonder why you didn't. Sorry, can I ask you a question? Sorry, can I ask you a favor? Could you put、uh, your、um, mobile volume a little bit down because I can't hear my voice. How? How's that? Um. Better, much better. Thank you. Better. Yeah. All right. So、um, you've been working as a professional painter for many years,、uh, but I wonder why didn't you have any exhibition until most a year ago? Am I right? Why? What happened? Well, <laughs> well, I've only been working as a professional painter for three years. Okay. So I have always painted, but I was not professional. And well, I stopped. I stopped for a long time、mm-hmm. because I felt like it was frivolous, and someone like me didn't deserve to paint. So I had, you know, my head was a bit screwed up about it for a while. So, and my dad did not like me painting at all. <laughs> no, he、uh, he's the main reason I stopped. But I won't go into that, or I'll cry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs>、um, But then I became a professional photographer, and、yeah. a- after I was an actor in New York, I moved when I was eighteen, became an actor, then professional photographer. And about three years ago, I picked up the paint again, and I just felt something that I hadn't felt since picking up the camera for the first time. So I just fell in love with it again. And one thing's led to another, and then Vince、uh, and Helen from Day Gallery、um, saw some of my work, and they gave me a go. So, yeah. And then I, after my first、uh, exhibition, I then called myself a professional painter. You are a professional painter. Well, I've been through every, all of、well, all of your works and what you've done in the past till recently, and that's why I was wondering what's what's happening. Why you didn't have any solo exhibition? But、um, all right, so it seems like you're very perfectionist. Am I right? <laughs> what's that say? What? It seems like、um, you're a perfectionist. Am I right? I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still, I, I still can be, and I have to stop myself.、Mm-hmm. But with photography, totally a perfectionist. Like every centimeter, millimeter of a frame, I see, and yet I'm trying to be, and I'm spontaneous at the same time. With painting, part of my journey with painting is giving that up. Okay, fair enough. And losing the perfection, embracing mistakes, and making the mistakes part of the beauty.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, we all do as an artist. I understand. Yeah. So I'm talking. I I'm sure you I like watch some of my um, um conversation with different artists. So um I've talked to lots of Iranian and foreign artists over the past few days or weeks. And one of the questions that I've asked them is about the word style. Many of them have a problem with that, even though people ask them, "What is your style of work?" And they believe that the most of the works are contemporary and abstract in nowadays. And what is your opinion? What is your impression? Style is a hard one because you do play with this thing in your mind a lot. Do I keep a consistent style? Am I meant to look? It, are you meant to look at my work and tell it's my work from, you know, just from looking at it without knowing my name? Do、mm-hmm. I forge a style that that is that is that signature, or、mm-hmm. not? And part of that to me is perfectionist thinking. The very thing that I'm trying to get over, and、right. so while the work does come out, and I think it looks like my work, 
I kind of don't like, I mean, I will label it abstract. That's, uh, and whether it's contemporary or not, that's, it is, I'm doing it now, so it's contemporary. And um, now it's contemporary. I'm not hearkening back to another era of, although I'm inspired by a, by a lot of painters from another era, mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily hearkening back to that era. Um, so yeah, I would say, yeah, contemporary abstractionists, I have no problem with that. Yeah, yeah, because when I say, like when I ask them, well, what, like, what's your style? I said, well, I don't like this question. And um, I thought, well, that's very interesting. I thought one or two people just, just responded that way. But the majority of artists from England, from uh, Paris, from uh, Frankfurt, from New York, from Iran, when I've spoken, actually, what she resp responded actually was very similar to what uh, Dave um, replied to this question. And it's very, very interesting. And I'm learning mm. through this conversation with all of you. That's very, very interesting. So am I. I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I believe that your works are quite different and unique. And uh, meaning that some people can relate completely to your paintings. And some of them cannot at first. I would like to know if you've ever come across someone who tells you that, you know, I don't understand um, what you're trying to show and I don't get the message from your work. And then uh, did you help them or that person to find a new perspective towards your paintings by explaining and, in, and uh, interpreting for them? It's interesting because you're, you're absolutely right, Borne. Like you get people that go, oh my God. They, and that's my goal. I mean, well, my, I have two goals. I want people to either go, oh my God, I, I feel that emotionally. Or I want people to go, what, what is this? <laughs> I want you either to love it or hate it. I don't really want in between. I don't like, I don't like in the middle. I don't like, you know, I, so do I have time to explain to people that kind of don't get what I'm doing? Not really, you know, it's not, up to me to teach people how to read abstract compared to figurative painting, compared to a literal landscape or something like that, all of which requires great talent. Like I, I personally don't respond to landscapes. I, I find them, I, I'd rather go out on a cliff somewhere I look out and look at what really is than look at right. someone's landscape. But can I appreciate the talent involved? Yes. So I, if it's a close family member, I'll say, look, I had someone the other day say to me, I took a painting over to someone's son who had bought the painting. And the mother said, what is this in the corner? Is it a rubbish bin? <laughs> I said, and all I said, if you want it to be. <laughs> but, you know, and all I simply said was, there's a different way to le read landscapes, uh, 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 abstracts, compared right. to other kinds of art. You know, right. you look at the colors, you look at the grades, you, you feel the emotion. Yeah, yeah. But if we're, well, let's say someone's very interested to kind of to know more about that. It's not about timing. It's about like what is happening here is very, right. sometimes the result can be completely different. You know what I mean? Uh, through the painting, through the film, you know, because sometimes I've got an audience for my films that they couldn't quite relate to what I made. And they were just asking me, can you please tell us? Because we're unsure that what the message you try to convey. So um, this, is, this is more, this is the things actually I want to know. What sort of messages you want to convey to your audience? What do you want they know or they get from your work? Well, for me, I, I paint from a very personal place. Mm -hmm. So I usually come in about four o'clock in the morning 
despite some days not wanting to come in or but I use all of those feelings those feelings of resistance and the feeling of being cold or hot or frustrated you know and we we've all been trained that those aren't really good feelings to have if you want to be happy and I'd like I'd like to explore that a bit because I feel like you, we've got this notion of what happy is and happy, you can be hot and happy, cold and happy, aggravated, resistant and happy, whatever that is. But so I take that mood, which we all have, all of us have that spectrum of emotion and feelings of course. and I use it. And I would say I'm, pretty optimistic as a person so I my paintings are a bit optimistic they have a touch of the um, abject you know there's a bit of frustration you can sense there's a layer of emotions that we all yes. experience as human beings in the paintings yes. so I go from there and I usually cue up some really good inspiring music like I usually blast like Bat for Lashes or yes. Kate Bush or PJ Harvey or even Madonna sometimes if I just need to get moving, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> but usually it's a um, magnetic field, something a bit alternative that I listen to. And so what I try to convey to the viewer is the sense of emotion. I mean, I think you can look a person that can read abstracts can look at the abstract, my work, tell my color palette what I've chosen very last minute. Every right. very last minute, because I need to just feel it. And I hope that they can relate to that emotion in themselves. So that's yeah. what I'm trying to convey. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I can see it through because I've been through, I, 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 you know, I keep looking at your words and I found that you don't use um, such strong uh, colors and it's quite mild and it's quite mellow, you know, through even the, um, even the texture you've been chosen for your uh, words, which it quite makes everyone feel relaxed. It's not like that. Yeah, yeah. And even if a color does go on a bit strong, I'm usually like, whoa, that only conveys one layer. I need to dig into that a little and take a bit of the color off. <laughs> so I like to convey a multi-layered sense. In the Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. How long have you been living in Australia for? Uh, since 1995. So 25 years. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So tell me, what did you choose painting at an early age when you still didn't know much about who you really are and what was that strong connection between you and the colors? Uh, I want to snap, I want to snap you back in those days, the moments you feel that's it, that's what I wanted to do. That's, that's what I wanted to do. Oh, I like this. It's like a psychiatry section. I love it. <laughs> I'm being transported back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's funny because I've only within the last like three or four years been able to put words to this, but I will take myself back and put words. I think from the time I was born, I was attracted to shiny objects. I was attracted to beauty. You know, I was attracted to, I can only speak for myself. I'm sure all of us are in some way, but my thing, you know, was the age of bell bottoms and big hair and makeup and, ah. you know, um, extravagant hippie clothes and the mixture of colors and the way, you know, our convertible blue Mustang would drive down the streets of Detroit and the sun would flare in my face, dulling out the colors of the, of the trees, you know. So the I just, and my mom, my mom was such a, she was my, I mean, I have to say she was my saving grace through 
my whole childhood. If it wasn't for her and not only her beauty that inspired me, but her knowledge that, that made me go on, I would be working and I'm not downing what this is, but for me, I wouldn't have been happy. I would be married with kids working no, on a you. factory line, <laughs> unless my mother said to me, you go out, I see it in you, you go out into the world, you, okay. you see it. So back to the beauty. So one, the one thing I realized, even from an early age is and I know this sounds funny because I've always thought of this as a bit frivolous, but one of my core values is beauty. Yeah. Not necessarily pretty. I can find pretty. beauty pretty. in an oil slick that's got color in it. So something that's abject with some beauty in it. So I can find beauty in most things. I, do I, I don't like pretty, but I do like beautiful. I always have. Perfect. <laughs> no, I want <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> no, 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 I like it. I really enjoy oh, good, it. I really, good. really enjoy it. Uh, when good. I talk to different artists. Um, when I like to know, you know, I ask them usually this question because I want to know what was going on you know, back in those years, you know, or those days when they started learning, because it's a kind of, when you connected to any art or any particular, like painting, acting, you know, photography, just something that you can connect it with or connect it to. But it, um, it happens usually subconsciously, you know, mm -hmm. that's why it's very important for me to go through what was happening in their minds, you know, what was happening in their thoughts. And when they started like see, well, I'm connected to, to paint, I'm connected to colors. For example, for me, it's never happened because I always wanted to become a filmmaker. And at the early age, I started filmmaking. You know what I mean? My interpretation towards what I'm doing is very different to what you're doing. We're both artists, but you know, what was happening in your mind and the way that you connected or related uh, yourself to, to the paint was very like, it's interesting for me, uh, well, like interesting for me to know. And now I want to change the <laughs> atmosphere a little bit. So as you said, so I want you please uh, give us a tour and, um, and show what you're doing, what you've done. I'm gonna become quiet, so there is okay. an option. You can get up, so there is an option on your phone. You can reverse the camera, okay. and then you can you can lead it. You you you're a director now, so you Ooh, you, you okay. do whatever you can. Do your mindset. <laughs> and you when reverse you're the camera, what there is an option. I see. You can it. reverse it. There you go. Oh, that's a pretty scene. Okay, so these are some, so I work big. So my paintings are all like two meters by three meters or two meters by two meters. And here are some of the latest works I've done only in the last two or three weeks. And forgive me, but I forget the titles. <laughs> That's but I'll, I'll show you. They're like floor to ceiling. So this one I did this week and I was, it's funny because I find something new in every painting and I go into every painting hoping that I'm able to, you know, let go and experiment. So here I really did, like I did things in this painting, like I didn't try to make any kind of shapes really. I tried to just join a lot and I was feeling quite overwhelmed to tell you the truth at the time that I made this. So um, so that happened last week. And then... Wow, I like this one. Uh, this is one of my favorites. So I got to get this stretched and framed. So it's big. So wow. This is called Hold Me Like a Mother Would. Mm -hmm. So 
And it comes from a Daniel Johnston song that I was listening to on repeat. But I had it on the floor. That actually started with me accidentally stepping in the paint. I had a <laughs> long dress on. And I was like, oh, I like that. <laughs> So I worked with it, and then I purposely added that one. <laughs> and then I worked my whole composition around that one mistake of a footmark. So that's Hold Me Like a Mother Would. Um, here... We have another big one. I like um, this one. Yeah, this one's sweet. I, and usually I do work with these sorts of shapes. These shorter shapes just come to me for some reason. And the good thing about being able to show you like this or to see them in person is so much different than Instagram because the scale of them is diminished in Instagram. So the scales are bigger than me. So... You know, so that's, uh, and it's got nice little details. Like I actually said, fuck you in this one, sorry to your audience. But then I was like, oh, I can't really say that. So I kind of left the F and the OU because I'm a nice gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> and there, I stepped on it again on accident. And I don't mind, you know, and sometimes a word will stick in my head like this word here is process, I believe. It's a big canvas, am I right? Yeah, it's um, two meters tall by a meter and a half wide. So okay. they're quite big. Wow. It's very yeah. wide, it's quite wide. Yeah. Okay. So, and this was, this was a total experiment, like, this is a banner size. So this is two meters high by a meter wide, which is usually a um, dimension I don't work with. And I, st I just wanted to do something different. I got really tired of it all one morning. So I just took a pen, some ink, and started going on repeat with these ink marks. Wow, that's very interesting. And then I decided I was really tired of doing this. <laughs> and I stopped. And then I started working with my shapes again. And I just came up with this mm -hmm. shape. So this took a good day. To... Okay. So you don't use any kind of template. So whatever it happens, it's happening um, at the same time that you're working on any, uh, any one of your projects. Am I right? That's right. I, I don't. I will sit down. And sometimes I'll have an idea of what I'm going to do. But I swear to you, out of 200 paintings I've done in the last year and a half, only okay. one of them have followed through with an idea that I had to begin with. Okay. And that what, it wasn't a very inspired painting because I thought about it too much. So thinking is not really my forte when it comes to making visual art. So... There, I will pull back the curtain. There are a couple more back there. You need to step a little bit back that we can't see the whole paint because it's just... Um... Okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so it's all like process painting. I process my emotion with the paint, but because of my photography, I uh -huh. will say I have a very good sense of composition. So... Mm -hmm. That's and of what works with what color wise. And there's a few back here on my desk. What is that one? This. <laughs> I should never ask. Let me pull this one aside and show you the full one. Okay, so I'll, I'll pull back. Yeah, stay there. Okay, so, so this. I like this okay. one. I did a resin. Oh, sorry. Turn it back. Oh, yeah, I did a residency in Japan with my photography. I had a show at um, 
Penrith Regional Gallery, and I went with uh, Victoria Hobbit and John Kirkman. They were the CEO and the main curator at Penrith Regional Gallery. And I photographed um, Japanese workers in their uniforms. So... Can you put the, the camera up a little bit? That I want to see the head uh, also. Is that a head? Am I right? That is a head. And so uh, I'll up, just... More up that they see the whole... Um, yes. Great. Mm. Yeah, what so... is this? What's, is it a, it's not a pen. Is it like you use a brush? Am I right? Yeah, it's a Posca pen. Okay. So it's, it's an acrylic pen. So I just went over and over and then I just... Uh, made them a new outfit. <laughs> okay. That's really yeah, so, but the good thing is, is I've got the originals, you know, where they're just photographed and they were photographed for many years, but now I've decided. Oh. Yeah, and then this is, um, this one's called Miles with Sylvia. So it's more, one of my more um, subdued paintings. So who knows, maybe I was feeling a bit nostalgic that day. And, um, I love Sylvia Miles, the actor. So, okay. Yeah, so I thought of her. So, Borna, I wanted to say, so you've seen all of these unstretched. I, I just wanted to take you into the house and show you how they look stretched and framed. Is that perfect, right? perfect. Okay, I'll, We've got I'll take few, you in. We've got 15 minutes. What's that? We've got 15 minutes. Okay, I'll give me three. Okay, I'll turn around. I love this. This is my house. Hello, house. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> That's Odie. Hi. That's me. <laughs> wow, what's a cozy uh, place you've got? Oh, thanks. So that, oh, okay. that one's big. It's two meters by three meters. It's, it's called Event Horizon. And that's how they look. They're quite beautiful when they, I don't know, it just adds something to the framing and the stretching, etc. So say hi, guys. No, don't. Hello. <laughs> Those are my boys. That's All right, so yeah, that's, that's what's very interesting. Yeah, the, like the composition that you were just talking about, it's very obvious. And um, in particular, the 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 um the one that you show is hanging on wall, uh, with a like white color wall, so it shows the paint much better. It's like yeah, it, absolutely, absolutely. And it's true. I'm jealous of you. You're living in one of the. I used to live in Blackies. I'm uh, not Blackies. Yeah, Blackies. Yeah, Black I was telling you years ago, and I love that area in New South Wales. It's amazing. It's an amazing area, actually. It's very peaceful. It's so peaceful. And it's, it's um, I read somewhere recently that um, per capita, ah, there are more I... artists per capita here than most places in Australia. So, y yes. It's also very that. inspiring. I've heard yeah. that. Thank you very much for a lovely tour. I really appreciate it. I'm sure um, uh, people liked it very much. So um, now I want to ask you a really different question. And I really want to hear your honest uh, answer. We've had lots of talented artists in Australia. Okay. But I'm wondering why there are two fear programs on TV or radio that they talk about these people. I haven't heard, I haven't seen, I haven't, like in, like in comparison, comparing to America, to Europe, why we don't see it? You know what I mean? Like we don't have a channel or if they, we've got a channel, what there's no program talk about like a metro artists or about a professional artist, but professional filmmakers, professional painters, writers. And I'm just wondering, why? What do you think? Oh, I wonder, I mean, I've kind of wondered. I mean, we're, it's definitely a sporting nation here. Oh, yeah. It's all about the footy, the cricket, all of yeah. that. I mean, you're in a pretty great spot in Melbourne. I always think of Melbourne as 
very yeah. art loving and <laughs> yeah. Better, slightly better than Sydney, but I don't. I I moved to Melbourne like back in 2014 because I had that uh, impression about Melbourne City. Yeah, it can be a little bit more artistic or arty, but mm. not much really different. Uh, why? Why? Why do you think it's like that? Well, I think places like Europe, <clears throat> not so much America, maybe parts of America, um, Asia. Japan. I mean, they're older countries, mm -hmm. older cultures. I think they uh, can sit with themselves and their culture a bit more. I think here, Australia might be, and don't get me wrong, I love it here, but because I love it here, I can criticize. So um, yeah. I think there's still this sense of youth and what it takes. Everyone's kind of looking out there what it takes to be valid or what's validated. And things tend to work within clicks. And this newest restaurant opened up this week. We're all there. Forgetting about the Pellegrinis up the road that's been there for 50 years, you know. So I think that ties into its lack of appreciation for yes. the arts on TV, et cetera, mm -hmm. is that lack of being able to be, sit with yourself. And I think art makes you sit with yourself. Like but, each time I like, uh, watch TV, I don't, I stopped watching TV like 10 years ago. And, but when I used to watch TV, I said, well, why there's no like, even in Iran, when the film festival is going on or a gallery is going on, you know, um, I think it's more probably cultural, like they show it on TV, they talk to the artists. But whenever I like watch TV, it's not all about sport or politics in Australia. And I gave up, you know? Mm. And that's where I thought, well, if no one really cares, I'm gonna like take a step forward and I'm gonna find Australia like uh, people who are artists uh, artists in Australia to gonna have a conversation with someone should start to stop working these people you know what I mean and this is really yeah. important it's not much it can be a little bit cultural but it's not all about cultural no you know? it's true well you're absolutely right and I think that's like in America in America it's not a cultural um, um, country or like the history but people supporting each other, you know, not all around, not all everywhere in America, but you know, mm. in like in New York, in Los Angeles, or in like a Washington, mm. people supporting each other. Here, what I found is people quiet, like in, in particular, I'm not generalizing, you know, it's my opinion, maybe I'm completely um, wrong, but it's more isolated. Even you can feel it in an artistic way. Mm. Well, it's funny because uh, I, I mean, I also think there's the tall poppy syndrome here. There's what? The tall poppy syndrome. Okay. Have yes. you heard that expression? No, I, I, no. A tall poppy is once someone starts to feel like they can achieve something that's quite can you put fabulous. The camera, sorry, can you put the camera a little bit up? Uh, your face is up. Yes, better. Yeah. Sorry, go on. Yeah, sorry. Once, uh, so the tall poppy syndrome is cut someone down before they think they're too big for the britches. Mm. And I think there's still, I think it's gotten better here, but I still think there's a sense of that. I know that when I started painting again and started putting it out there again, someone looked me, well, didn't look me in the face, couldn't look me in the face and said, <laughs> <laughs> what? what are you doing? And I said, um, well, I don't know, but whatever your story is, is your story. It's not my story. So, you know, and I just think there's that old English sort of reserved sort of lack of support here that yeah. like you can get in other places. But, you know, I can say that and I can actually mean that, but I've got such a great support system around me, you know. Of I've, course. 
I've got Vince and Helen at the gallery. I've got my partner, Andy, who believes in me and I believe in his artistry. I've got my kids who help me, you know. I've got the artist, Julie Harris, up the road, who is fabulous. She's, yeah, she's been so supportive and I love her work. And I've got Simon Reese across town, who's yeah. a great ceramicist who supports me and I support him and Scott Marr. You know, right. I've got my, maybe it just takes a little while longer to tap in here and, you know, the circles are smaller. I don't know, but in general, I hear you. It's a sporting young nation. Yeah, so. yeah. And my last question for you, uh, I really enjoyed that, that, uh, that uh, conversation. So my last question for you is, does how much social media uh, helps you or it's been helping uh, to promote your, what you're doing? Tell me about the platform you've got on Instagram. Okay. I used to have a love-hate relationship with Instagram. <laughs> I, used to, I don't like what it did to my photography. Like I felt like with photography, it diminished the importance of photography. And okay. I felt like, and maybe, this, maybe that's a great thing because that was part of my decision in really focusing in on the painting. So now that I'm painting, what a great way to show the world my paintings. And I, and you know, like I say, scale is a problem for me, but that you can zoom in on the details. You know, I've learned all these hashtags that I can use to connect with other artists. Of course. And now I, I just love it. I've got a circle of friends on Instagram that, like I have in real life, like the people I mentioned before. I've got Natalie in New York, who's a great friend. I have Nida in Iran, who's a great painter and friend. Okay. And I've got um, Kai Tat, who's in Berlin, who we all support one another. And, you know, it's really nice when someone like today's art report sees one of my posts and that I'm going to put that up. I mean, that garnished me like a thousand followers. You know, so of course, it's a of course. great way to reach people, and it's a great way to. I'm very inspired, but what I, what I see out there from other people, like when you contacted me, I of course went through most of your interviews, and I was like, this guy is fantastic. So I got to meet you through it. So <laughs> I think social media used correctly is a fabulous thing. It's and one of the things that I like, yeah, I agree uh, with you. And one of those things I really like from social media on different platforms, and uh, like in cyber um, world, uh, is people are very straightforward. If they don't like what you do, they, you, you know, they can't come as someone unknown and just, um, you know, put the comments or message, you know, and say, well, I don't like it because of this, 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 this can be hurtful or it can be sometimes ouch, but you know, it is good because you hear probably a right, like very straightforward opinion or feedback straight away. Mm, yeah. Like the painting you said earlier that you really loved that I said had some of the shapes that I usually use in it. I had a guy come on, a professor of art come on and said, doesn't look resolved. <laughs> and I left it and then finally a few days later because usually I'll leave something for a day to process it and see if it's even worth responding and I just said is that for you or is that for me because for me I'm, it's where I want it to be exactly so, exactly yeah, yeah. all right Harold it was so pleasure talking to you, having you here. I really appreciate your time. I really enjoyed having conversation with you. Did you like our conversation? I loved it. I think you're great. Thank you. <laughs> you're Thank easy you. to talk to. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Hopefully, see you someday in reality, in real life. Yeah. When in Blackie, come back.
Yes. <laughs> you take care and have a lovely day. And hopefully this um, day is uh, end soon, very soon, end very soon, and everything back on normal track again. For yeah, you. yeah. Yeah. All great. right. Thanks, Gorna. You're welcome. Take care. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Yeah, you too. Bye bye. All right. Uh, thank you very much for watching us. I really appreciate that. If you want to find out more about Harold, David actually can go to his Instagram page then find out actually the conversation with. And I really appreciate that. There are lots of questions came through, and unfortunately, I didn't have a time because I was fully like was really enjoying uh, the conversation that I had with Harold. So thank you. I really appreciate that. And see you soon. Bye.